Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast, brought to you by the REC Toycast. I'm your host, Roman Chavez, and with me as always... Eric Gickeris. Eric! What's up, dude? You can find us on the Grom at REC Podcast. You can follow myself at Roman REC Podcast, and you can follow the bomb dude. Gulag underscore J underscore Wilden. Oh, man. What's Eric, up? you've been going out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've been towing the line. You've been, you've been, you've been spreading your wings. You've been flying. Okay? <laughs> so proud of you. So proud of you. Thanks, man. Uh, Flying too close to the sun. Yeah, you know, well, as, as, as close as we can get you there. Yeah, there you go. A couple weeks ago, uh, you reached out to uh, artist Tom Neely. Yes. You had a nice conversation with him. Uh-huh. And you come up to me, he says, Roman, Roman, yeah. you says. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk to uh, artist Joelle Jones. I Jones, And she responded to me, and we're going to have a conversation. That's, yep. And I love it. Thanks, I man. love it. Um, for those that that aren't that aren't as familiar with the art of Joelle Jones, um, I know her from a book called Lady Killer, yep. and which she then, wrote also, too. which she wrote, which that I didn't pay attention to. I actually only read the first two issues. Um, it was an impulse buy. It was at one of my local comic book stores. Uh, it was on the shelf. They had it. And I believe is the second printing because I believe my cover is red. Uh-huh. Uh, super interesting. I just. It started to get some heat to it. Sure, but it's kind of, it was a dark horse book. Right, right. So a lot of places don't actually keep more than a couple copies of the of those indie or more, more sure, indie books sure. on there. So I bought the first two as I saw them, and then I just fell out of it. Right, right. So uh, a lot I'm gonna, going I'm gonna, on, dude. I'm gonna have to come back to that one. Um, but I did read. I believe I read all of the issues that she did the art for uh, for Batman Rebirth in the Rules of Engagement storyline, and then I believe the storyline is called Brighter Burglar. Um, but the Rule of Rules of Engagement storyline was kind of fun because it has uh, Bruce is, is as a has a spoilers right. has uh, proposed to Selena Kyle, and they're kind of like on this mission in the desert, huh. and uh, you can tell they're going somewhere for some reason. And what they do is they land in this, like, you know, desert, uh, uh, Egyptian feeling, you know, uh, decrepit, <laughs> you know, area. Excuse me. Yeah. And, uh, and Talia is there. Oh, no. So, like, it's kind of, uh, it's not her asking permission, oh. but it's like, her kind of showing that she's worthy to like yeah. bear the seed of Bruce Wayne, <laughs> um, and it, yeah, and and it was an art that I wasn't super familiar with when I saw it, right? And and I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I liked kind of the and after listening to your interview, yeah, um, uh, kind of the the madness in the lines, sure, yes, um, uh-huh. so like the for me, you know, the flesh tones and everything are good, but like hard dark lines, and then they're just a ever so scratchy yes uh-huh. um and and i think that 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 art really works well especially i don't know if this sounds right coming from a woman it's just like it it, it was just like a little bit like i'm doing the job but i'm gonna do it my way yeah heck and, yeah, and it was su- yeah I, I found the 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 tones and everything about it to be dark and I know we use the word gritty a lot, but definitely these these black lines are very gritty, and I, and I thoroughly it. thoroughly enjoy it. And and I need to get this statue. I, I think it's still up for pre order. I'm gonna have to get it. But she designed the kind of the wedding dress, That's right? Uh, for Selena Kyle, That's and it's right. beautiful. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's gorgeous, man. Um, so you sat down. Uh, you guys had a phone interview. Yes, uh-huh. and it's a really fun conversation. And we're gonna play it for you right now. Heck yeah, man! Yeah, Joey, awesome. You're a great chick, uh, Joel. Jo- oh, Joel. It's my fault. I keep saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Jo- jo- Jolay. I don't yeah. know why. Oh, it's my it's, bad. Remember, anyway. it's like Jorel. You yeah, know? there you go. S- son of Jorel. Yeah, she's no. got that Kryptonian lineage. Yeah, lineage. but uh, yeah, I don't know any artists like her, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for unique art, and uh, she she's amazing. All right, guys, one of the funniest people I've ever talked to. So check it out. With less ado, Joel Jones and the Icarus. <laughs> And just so you don't think there's anything wrong with yours, we were having some technical difficulties. This is kind of new for us, um, so we do kind of enter in on a question. So it's not your guys' uh, – there's no connection issue. It is a, a uh, REC issue. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, I was, if there's like an element of humor to the violence, um, it, it's always – do you think it has to be over the top or do you think it can be subtle? Oh, yeah. I, I appreciate both, I guess. It just depends on – you know, what genre it is I'm reading or watching. Um, but, like, I just saw um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, yes, yes. And and that, la- that last fight scene was probably one of my favorite. <laughs> I just loved it. 
you know, there's moments. I mean, there's it's a, it's a drama all in itself. So there's moments of humor, and then there's you know serious, scary moments, and uh, it can be just as dramatic, uh, you know, inside of that fight. Well, definitely. I uh, and you know, Tarantino is almost the, you know, the textbook on how to do a, a tightrope walk with balance, with violence and humor. Yeah. And um, I think that last fight scene was was pretty much a crash course or just the doctorate course on how to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, the, the subject matter is, is touchy just because it's, you know, it's Charles Manson and, you know, yeah. it's, it's pertaining to real history. But, you know, I think if you're taking it over the top like that, it can be, it can be rather uh, amusing, you know. Yeah, and, you know, it, it relieves a little bit of the tension. R- right. For, at least for me. Oh, no, for me, you know, for me as well. I always thought, you know, uh, dark comedy was, the release of the the tension that's built up behind something that something tragic that happened and i i always find that kind of part of your artwork was doing that was like you you can see that there was a buildup of something and then there's this beautiful image but then it's it's got this sort of dark sheen to it and it's fascinating do you think your your um your, your background as an oil painter uh kind of played into that <laughs> i'm not sure okay. i <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't really fit in with that crowd very well. Um, oh, wow. If you, yeah. If I, can, you I, I mean, I can imagine. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, you know, yeah, I, my oil paints were pretty dark, but they weren't fun dark. They were just straight up dark. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's depressing. I didn't have fun with that. So. Right, sure. I mean, it's sort of like you going through, you know, Picasso's blue period almost, right? <laughs> doing those kind yeah. of oil paintings, I guess. And then what you're doing now is maybe his cubist phase, I guess. But uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that yeah it's uncomfortable, I think, for me to like, really express that stuff. But if you do it with humor, you can, or at least I can uh, sure. get across ideas and thoughts way better. Okay, that, so that was the outlet for, for the artwork almost. It was, you know, yeah. a release of the humor, but also having, I'll tell you, yeah, it was just great to see that it's not, it's supposed to be serious, but it's not taken serious, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think especially in Lady Killer, it's, it's definitely it, not to be taken seriously. Pre- precisely. I mean, it's, uh, that that's uh, it's just amazing. We'll get that to like in a second. But, uh, you know, when when you, so let's go back to when, you know, because so you were doing oil paintings in Oregon, was that, or you were going mm-hmm. to school for that rather. Yeah. And um, were you just kind of, you, know, you said you were depressed, kind of over it. Were you just like, okay, uh, I want to do comic books? Or was that just kind of a thought on the back burner? You know, I I declared to my mother that I wanted to draw comics when I was eight. Oh, wow. Uh, after I started reading it, I was like, that's it. This is all I want to do. And, you know, I read them all the time and I was drawing all the time. So it was natural that it would kind of fit together. Um, sure. But I think, you know... When I went to college, there wasn't illustration available. There weren't any comic book classes available. So painting was the next thing. And then, you know, when I realized that this is definitely not for me, um, and I had no other plans, I thought, well, you know, fuck it. Let's go. Let's go for it. Let's try it. Totally. I mean, that's that. I think everyone's got to have that moment in their young adult life where they say that and they either keep doing what they're doing and they kind of lull into a, you know, a life or they just mm-hmm. say that and they, and they just go for it. And that's, that's inspiring. And it was at that point you went to a convention, if I'm correct, and you ran into David Mack. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Did, and you, I, from what I read, you had a, you, you kind of hastily put a portfolio together and you, yeah. you, you showed him and he was pretty impressed by it nonetheless. Yeah. He was so sweet. I mean, he just, you know, First of all, he took the time to convention, which was so kind. And then to look at my stuff, and I just really wanted a critique. And he looked at it and, and you know, he's like, oh, can I take this portfolio for a minute? And I was like, sure. And he ran it over to Diana Schutz uh, from Dark Horse. Right. Um, and she hired me straight there. So, yeah. <laughs> Talking about a Cinderella story, that is pretty intense. <laughs> It was, yeah. <laughs> that like almost takes almost like scary kind of confidence to do something like that. Oh yeah, no, I had my best girlfriend with me, and and she she really <laughs> orchestrated all of it. I have no confidence for that. Oh, you had to have something to be pushing it, but you know it's good to have yeah. someone have your back. 
and have yeah, friends. You need a hype man. You. Yeah. <laughs> you need your flavor slave, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. That is awesome. But then it was at that point, were you doing freelance work for, for Dark Horse at that time? Or did you go right into DC or Marvel? No, I did. Uh, I did a lot of work for hire for um, Dark Horse for a while. And then uh, I went over to Oni oh, okay. uh, and, and did a bunch of books with them. And yeah, I just kind of progressed. Uh, yeah, started eventually being batting. at DC. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Did you work for DC first or Marvel first? I'm trying to remember. I think uh, I think it was I Marvel think it was first. DC. It was a book called The Minx, if I'm correct. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's right. Yeah, so it would definitely be DC. Yeah, and um, I, I've never read the book. Just just briefly saw the cover, and um, it looks great. <laughs> it's I might really need to track cute. It, I need to track it down sometime. Um, it, but it's so sweet. I really enjoyed that book. That's awesome. That's good. Yeah, it's a good way to get your foot in the door at DC doing those kind of yeah. books. I mean, that's awesome. Um, was this when you met uh, Jamie Jamie S. Rich? Yeah, about the time. So uh, when I took the job with uh, Dark Horse, the first one. Diana didn't really have much work for me after that. So um, her and uh, Jamie used to work with her for years. Oh, okay. And, uh, they got in touch, and she's like, you know, throw this girl a bone. And uh, he he was just sitting on a graphic novel um, waiting for an artist to come along, and he had, it was uh, 12 Reasons. Oh, okay. And we met up for coffee. Uh, I brought my portfolio, and it turns out we live two blocks away from each other. Oh, nice. That helps. And, yeah. So, yeah, we just we became instant friends. I think uh, from that moment on, we even went karaoke that night. <laughs> That's real friendship test right there, for sure. Is, well, yeah, especially if you've heard him sing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the, the the song you guys, one of your the songs you one of you sang? You know, I think... I, I don't know if it was that one, but he always liked to um, do me a favor and think uh, Neil Diamond, who I'm obsessed with. Oh. So. <laughs> nice. I mean, yeah, yeah. Neil, Neil rocks. You know, it's either you're Neil Young or Neil Diamond. You know, can't have both. <laughs> no, you cannot. Uh, uh, yeah, he, I think he always thinks I am, I said. so. Nice. Oh, that's um, classic. Do, yeah. do you remember which one you, were, which one you sang? Uh, yeah. What did I sing? Crack and Rosie, probably. Oh, my. Oh, wow. That's some deep cuts right there. <laughs> wow. Not That's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was this when you both decided to collaborate on Lady Killers, or was this a little bit down, a little bit further down the line? Further down the line. So we did um, uh, You've Killed Me after that. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, I started uh, working with other companies, and he was working with other artists. But I always had in my mind an idea of like, well, I may have to write my own book someday uh, if the work dries up with writers. Sure. Uh, and so I started working on Lady Killer, but I was really nervous about writing for my first time. So I asked Jamie to kind of walk me through the process, um, help me out, read my script, help me with dialogue and stuff like that. And yeah, that's kind of how it came along. And I think on the second, uh, second volume... I was kind of ready to let go and take off take the it, wheels. Take the reins, uh, take the reins yeah. for yourself. And I always, um, I, I think I remember reading that you two have a very, uh, there, there's kind of a push and pull dynamic between you two. Like you guys are kind of a, definitely the brother sister relationship where you kind of, you know, get on each other's nerves at times, you know, if you're working that oh, close, yeah. it's going to happen. Do you <laughs> yeah. think that feeds into the, the artwork and writing sometimes? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I've accidentally thrown in, you know, background characters that get murdered that kind of look like him <laughs> from time to time. That is pretty awesome. That is like mm -hmm. the best revenge you can get on somebody as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I think the latest one, I, I put him in the background of Catwoman, uh, just chilling and drinking whiskey. Are they <laughs> just, how you, just how you remember him, right? <laughs> yeah, I want to, yeah. I want to ever see him like I saw Yeah, I see him all the time. <laughs> I mean, natural I mean, habitat. Yeah, but, <laughs> I mean, that's good that you're, you know, bringing, you know, real artists see truth, you know, and that's great <laughs> yeah. that you're able to do that. Um, but real, uh, back, real quick, back to Lady Killer. I always thought it was amazing how, um, you know, when I got the book, 
I was legit kind of wanting something new. And a friend of mine at work handed me the both volumes. And I was like, oh, this looks very interesting. Um, started reading it. And uh, my girlfriend at the time was obsessed with 1950s, like pop culture. And she was pointing out to me how all the dresses were completely time period accurate. And oh, that attention to detail. Were, were you looking through old school magazines or researching fashion from the 1950s? Nonstop, yeah. I, I uh, the research probably was my favorite part. Oh, nice. I mean, I would take an entire afternoon to research what is the perfect clock that they would have on the wall. Um, wow. And I, I tried to keep in mind like how much money they would make, what was the median income, so what kind of house would they have, what kind of car would they have. You know, they wouldn't have a brand new model. They'd probably have one from about five years before. Um, Stuff like that I just got way too into. <laughs> no, that's great. It, it's little details like that that take it even further. And just, the you know, the time period, you know, again, you know, we all know that it was hard for, you know, minorities, women back then. It, it, yeah. was, it was subjugation at that time. And it was almost this character throwing off shackles of that and being, you know, being a hired killer. <laughs> and, you know, I always found a sense of um, dichotomy. In, in, in not just in this book, but in your artwork, there's beauty and then there's brutality. Mm -hmm. And if you do this balancing act so well, especially in this book for me, I always find, do you, you think that's accurate? If I'm, I'm not trying to be prescriptive or anything. I, just, you know, no, I, no. <laughs> I do think so. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I don't, I'm, maybe I'm a, a real downer because I can't, in, have a good time without being like, oh, you know, well, so and so died today, or you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just naturally really dark. Um, and when things are too saccharine or too beautiful or too poised, I, I tend to find it really boring. Sure. Uh, there's nothing I hate more than having to draw pretty people over and over and over again. Um, I'd makes... much rather draw somebody ugly. <laughs> That makes sense because I think we're, you know, we're so used to maybe seeing the idea of beauty just thrown at us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a good way to, like, you know, mix things up a bit. I mean, uh, I, I know you were taking inspiration from Norman Rockwell paintings. If, is that correct? Uh, a little bit of Norman Rockwell. I would say uh, I, a lot of the lifestyle illustrators from the 60s and 50s, um, I really love so much about, like, Robert McGinnis and, Oh, okay. Um, Holly, I'm obsessed with. Yeah. Oh, that. I mean, that makes total. I mean, that's great. Because it, 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 it was definitely a homage to that. I always felt that it was a perfect balance to that, a, a, a counterbalance to it, rather. And yeah, just uh, I cannot talk so much good things about this book because it, it was. Okay. By, I mean, the way you do your art is very cinematic, which I think plays right into what I want to talk about next: is your Catwoman run. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the way you draw her is, is, I've never seen it drawn that way before. It's, its again, it's brutality and the beauty. But, you know, again, I think it works well for Selena Kyle, who's straight up just a complicated character. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, she definitely embodies duplicity more than any other. I mean, I guess Two-Face probably is more. <laughs> That's in the name. So. There you go. <laughs> And it, I, again, you know, because, you know, she, she just kind of is conflicted about things and the way it's drawn. It, it's, again, it's perfect to the feminine character, but also, again, it's, it's punching holes in things. And it's, I think it's, it's a breakthrough. And, and it just not in that book, but just in the genre. I think you're really oh, breaking down walls straight up. So, oh, um, I appreciate that. Is, was, there a, a, was there a another DC character that you haven't had a chance to draw yet that you'd want to draw? Uh I think maybe Wonder Woman. I find oh. like drawing her is really fun. I like big, brawny, beefy. Sure. You know, uh, that body type would be really fun to draw. Yeah, um, that would be cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like, I I like Constantine quite a bit. Nice, good call. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think that would be a blast. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, uh, you know, going. I, you know, we, whatever's going on in the world right now, do you think it's going to be hard getting back into con season if we get back into it this year? As far as the selfies, the the artist alley kind of thing, do you think that's going to maybe be an issue yeah, from I here on so. out? Yeah, I would think so. You know, definitely 
uh, it's going to affect pretty much everything. I think going, you know, from here out, uh, culture has been kind of changed a bit, and yeah, we're all just going to have to figure out. Yeah, I think that's why it's so confusing right now. It's like, where are we all going to land on this? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's. I mean, it's going to be again because it's, it's that that industry is. You know, it's it's about the camaraderie and the you know, the atmosphere. So I, you know, I think, like you said, maybe it's going to be a different, and a time to adjust to it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as long as DC keeps paying for my dinner, I'll keep going. So. <laughs> um, I also read that you, you got a gig with Prada. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's talk about that. How did that happen? I, uh, well, they approached me. I didn't, you know, I'm not knocking on their door. But... Right. <laughs> Uh, they saw my stuff and they said, you know, do you have anything lying around that we could buy? And I just sent them a bunch of art and next thing I know, it was on a runway. And, uh, I'm a, I'm, I'm a huge fashion fanatic. Sweet. Um, yeah, totally. Probably not the way I dress, but it definitely. <laughs> what, oh, you can appreciate like to look at. it, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't afford it, but I will look at it. <laughs> um, and I collect purses, funny enough. So, um, I've got some really sweet product purses now, so. <laughs> it, it had its perks right there, totally. Oh, yeah, and, no. Uh, it was like, oh, and could you throw in uh, <laughs> throw in this purse, and do you still yeah, have this from this collection? <laughs> and maybe that nice gown over there, please. <laughs> yeah. That would be, yeah, that'd be killer. I think, yeah, next time that happens, just start, you know, start demanding it. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. you used it this time, I want twice as much now. <laughs> yeah, I want to get a little pushier next time, for sure. <laughs> uh, totally, you got to. <laughs> No, but they were yeah, no. really lovely to work with, like really fun, really nice. Um, and I was surprised by how supportive they are of uh, huh. independent artists. Like it was really great. That, that's, a, that, that's a shock to me. I, you know, again, I, I can only have ideas of what, you know, how things are. And I thought it'd be more rigid, you know, mm-hmm. as far as their work ethic. But if they're allowing you to, you know, just be you and create, that's awesome. Yeah, I was really surprised. I thought I thought the same thing that it would be like you know art by committee, we'd have to do a million rounds. Uh, no, it was probably the easiest job I've ever taken. Wow. Huh. Okay, Prada. Yeah. I okay. Never would have guessed that. <laughs> oh my God. Just um. So kind of rounding this out. Um. Is there so what outside of comic books influences you? Like, would you, what's your? Do you have like a favorite band or favorite record? Oh. I do collect records. Um, oh, cool. I'm a, I'm an obsessive. Well, I already said Neil Diamond, um, but uh, obsessive Sam Cooke fan. Wow. I can't I can't get enough. Like nice. It's all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's a problem. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm I, the same way with it. the Velvet Underground, so I I totally get it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that's killer. And, uh, yeah, I've been branching favorite? out lately with uh, Lionel Richie, but <laughs> Lionel. Okay, wow, not not Commodore's Lionel, but straight up solo Lionel. I've got a few Commodores, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, for sure. <laughs> That's so killer. That is awesome. And um, do you have a favorite author? Not um, not not in the comic book realm, like you know. Oh, uh, you know, I listen to books when I draw, so I go through a lot. Oh wow. Um, and lately I've been on um. It's a, it's true crime. Sweet. Oh, what is his name? He did this book, Night of the Grizzlies. I'm trying to remember his name. They're kind of cheesy, but I just love them. It's like <laughs> supermarket stuff, but oh my god, I love it. <laughs> I mean, I'll have to look into that. That sounds awesome. I did, okay, so you because I, I I've talked to other artists and they they you know they throw on the music, but you listen to to books while you're drawing. That's that's an interesting concept or interesting way to do it. Never yeah, heard that before. I, well, you know, drawing, once I've thumbnailed it and I know where I'm going, I find that, you know, I don't really need my brain after that, so I can use it for something else. Sure, so it's just kind of muscle memory at that point. Yeah, once I know what I'm drawing, yeah, I, just, I oh. get to it. So. Okay, that's pretty awesome. And uh, just kind of one more quick question. If you could have dinner with one superhero, who would it be? Living or dead, obviously. Oh, hmm. Or villain, super villain, I guess. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I mean, I can't think of any super villains that uh, are very good at cooking. 
And also, what could you trust for them? You know, that they would. That's come a good point. <laughs> well, who would you think would have like the best conversation? Like, if you were going to oh. sit down and have dinner with a, a, a any comic book character, I guess. Definitely not. Definitely not Batman. I I don't think he would be very good at conversation. <laughs> I think it's because there's too much similarity with the dark, but he doesn't have the humor you have. That's exactly. why it would be, <laughs> it would be tedious. Like, yeah, I know your parents died. Jesus. I know you're tortured. Jeez, man. <laughs> Lay off it for a second. <laughs> uh, oh, that is good. I don't know. Um, I think uh, Zatanna, because if you run out of wine, she can just get it for you. D- that or, is, <laughs> you know, that is good she pick. can make it happen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And if the conversation was bad, she can make you think it was great. Yeah, so you're, you're I, I would think like, I would have a great time. Yeah, yeah that's a good pick. Good pick. Nice. <laughs> oh, well, I really appreciate you taking the time. This is really super cool of you. And um, where can the kids find you at on the social media? Uh, I, I'm on Twitter and Facebook, but I don't really use it. I'm on Instagram. I like looking at pictures of people's pets. <laughs> oh, nice. That's awesome. Because, <laughs> yeah, I get um, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And then do you have anything coming up down the works that we should all be getting stoked for? Uh, Yes, but I can't really talk about it. But ah, uh, bummer. I'm very but, excited about it. So we, it's hard okay, not so, to talk about it. Fair enough. So, you know, we'll we'll be, definitely be keeping our eyes out for it. So, yeah. but um, cool. Thank you again. And I really appreciate you. And um, thank you. Wow. There you yeah. have it. Uh, an REC exclusive. Yeah. Uh, sounded like you were going to get some information I, I, for almost, a second. Yes, yes. She was about we to give up something to have. cool, man. Uh, uh, but uh, she caught herself. Good for her. Uh, good on her. And honestly, you know, she, I, I would have taken it out. Yeah. Gladly taken it out, but sure. I would have known. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would have been cool for me. It would have been nice. It would have been a nice conversation yeah. to have. Um, wow, what a very cool, like, down-to-earth person. Oh, I yeah. love going to, to, to artist alleys uh, at the cons. Right, right, right. But I'm... <sighs> I'm so bad with like people that I revere. Sure. And uh, you know, for me, comic book artists were kind of the first people that I started to see at cons Definitely. and speak to. And I was just blown away by them. And I never take the time out to have a conversation. And it's really hard there too yeah, it because is. It's, it's a circus. But yeah. uh she seems like she would be really cool to like chat with. Oh, well, that, that was that was super fun and, and, and interesting to hear. I love the bit about the listening to audiobooks while she yeah, does the art. I've never heard any artist Tell me that. Yeah. They listen to audiobooks. It's always, I'm throwing on some music, getting yeah. a vibe. And, and like like you said in, in the interview, and I was like, yeah, like tons yeah. of people, you know, oh, I do my homework, I listen to music. Yeah, totally. I couldn't imagine drawing or painting or doing any type of like intricate work and like trying to listen to somebody else tell me a story. Yeah, right. It would be difficult. Yeah. It would be difficult. I mean, it, it, I guess it could act the same way as music. It puts you in a headspace. Yeah. To don't draw. Mind, I mean, don't mind me crying. on my unicycle while I do this, uh, <laughs> while I do this uh, part of the podcast. Yeah. But... She, uh, yeah. She, she's great, man. Nice. She, uh, uh, again, just can't believe how, like you said, down to earth and just straight up funny. She yeah. was cracking me up that if you heard it, obviously she's making me laugh so much. And, yeah. Uh, I can't wait to see what she's gonna drop on us. Oh, I know. Yeah, like I'm. I'm like, whoa. What? What is this? Yeah. It has. It has the 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 pandemic kind of delayed an announcement. Sure. All know? right. Very true, uh, man. Because yeah. I've been I've been nothing but curious about what people in the industry are doing. Because this sounds like, uh, to 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 not be insensitive, this sounds something of an artist's dream because they can catch up on some oh, deadlines. Big time. Yeah. You know, sure. like you know, all things considered. The gift of time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, when you can't yeah. go anywhere, when you can't go do interviews, when sure. you can't go do these things, right. you can catch up on your deadlines and right. all that. Now, are writers going crazy? Who knows? Um, if there are, if they're writers worth their salt, it, it's help. It's feeding their madness. Yeah, that's <laughs> so. true. That's true. Um, yeah, great. I had a good time. She was just really super cool, and yeah, I'm just such a super fan. Nice. Now I'm a bigger fan. Yes. You know. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, gonna have to get that statue for the, oh, totally. for the studio. You know, yeah, I gotta find out which Neil Diamond record she doesn't have. Get it to her. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, kids, that's been our show. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you like what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, give us a like. Leave a comment. Are you a fan of the son of Joel? Um, <laughs> Neil before Zod. Uh, that, that that was great, man. I appreciate yeah, you uh, doing the legwork. Hey, man. Doing the legwork. You know, I, I, it's like you said. I got to use this time constructively, man. Yes. And if I can bring something cool to the channel, I'm going to do it, man. Yeah. We're going to run this together and... Anybody who's you know doing this for us, yeah, with us, thank you. Yeah, we cannot thank Joel Jones enough for taking the time yeah, out. I up. keep saying Joel Jones, 
it's, which also sounds like great. a DC character. It totally does, You're man. doing the right work. You're doing the right work. Thank you for taking the time to sit with uh, to sit with Eric and, and talk to him. Man, if we can get some booze involved and then she could have let that <laughs> slip and we had the exclusive, like that'd be great. You know, rum with Icarus, something oh, no. like that. You know, we'll, we'll have to work on that. We'll work into that. Yeah, yeah. Once once <laughs> the run is out. over, we'll, we'll get back in there, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I have been your humble host. Roman Chavez. Uh, I'm still Eric Icarus. Bomb dude, Eric Icarus. Bomb dude himself. Getting, getting us some interviews, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you on the next podcast.